All right, hello everyone, and welcome to this Kobe community call. Um, my name is Devin Soper. I work at Florida State University, and I'm serving on the Kopi Community Call uh, Working Group. And I'm just going to lead off uh, with a, a brief preamble about Kopi and uh, these calls. So uh, first of all, uh, there's an agenda and notes document for today, and I'm throwing a link to that into the chat. Uh, I may post it again a couple of times just in case people arrive in the coming minutes. Um, we also have a Kopi Twitter channel. Uh, so, and um, please take a look at that. Feel free to follow the account. Um, feel free to, you know, live tweet uh, about um, the discussion today if you want. Uh, we have a hashtag we um, would recommend to use. It's hashtag Kopi.com. Uh, and uh, that's written out in the uh, agenda notes document. We also have a section in the agenda notes document for introductions. Um, there's you know, maybe too many people on the call to sort of go around and introduce ourselves verbally. So please uh, just type out your name and affiliation. And if you want interest in attending uh, in the agenda notes document. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with COPI, uh, this is an acronym that stands for the Coalition of Open Access Policy Institutions. Um, and COPI was formed in 2011 to bring together representatives from North American universities uh, predominantly with established faculty-led open access policies, as well as those in the process of de developing such policies. Um, and in addition to supporting its 100 plus member institutions in the development and implementation of campus open access policies, COPI also advocates for a more open scholarly communication system at local, national, and international levels. There are absolutely no fees associated with COPI membership. Um, pers prospective members are asked to agree to a set of principles that guide COPI's education and advocacy efforts. For more information, um, please see the COPI website. Um, and I, I'll ask if um, uh, someone else on the call would be willing to throw that in the chat. Uh, with respect to these calls, our, our goal is really to create a, a supportive community dedicated to discussion of common questions and challenges related to open access policies, um, specifically the campus open access policies. Um, and in, uh, those include, but aren't limited to, you know, the process of advocating for uh, drafting, adopting, and implementing campus open access policies. Um, these calls are modeled on the Spark um, OpenCon community calls uh, and aim to provide a supportive environment where we can share candidly the challenges uh, and um, successes that we encounter in our day-to-day -day work. So we hope that this kind of uh, virtual community building can facilitate more connections between those working on open access policies and strengthen all of our respective efforts towards transforming the scholarly communication landscape. Um, thanks for bearing with me as I uh, talked through all of that. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the members of the COPE Steering Committee to get started with our open house today. Great. Thanks so much, Devin. Let me share our presentation. And are you able to see it? Yes. Brilliant. OK, um, wonderful. So thanks, uh, Devin, for the introduction. And to everyone who's joining us today, I wonder if we could start things off a bit by uh, a speaker sharing who we are, how long we've uh, been associated with Kopi and how we feel that Kopi has benefited us. So I'll jump in. I'm Alina Wrigley, the Product and Service Manager for Implementing UC's Open Access Policies at the California Digital Library, and I serve as the Vice Chair of the Kopi Steering Committee. I've been with Kopi for about two years now, um, though the University of California has been uh, members since I believe the start and being new to both institutional open access policies and North American research institutions in general, I've benefited from learning uh, the myriad forms of an institutional open access policy can take across North America. There's no 
um, easy one size fit all approach. And um, because of that, also the many ways that institutions are promoting, implementing and assessing their policies. And that's really, I feel benefited how we're able to do things at the University of California. And also hearing um, from everybody the issues and you know challenges and um, kind of the the good results that they've had in doing so. And I'll turn over now to Robin if you can give us a brief introduction. Hi, I'm Robin Sin. I'm situated at Johns Hopkins University. Um, I've been associated with COPE for about four years, um, first as an affiliate member, and then um, we became a full member when we finally implemented an open access policy for our faculty in 2018. And then I kind of jumped in with both feet to the steering committee here at COPE. Um, and I'll tell you a little story about one or two of the things that I have gotten out of my membership at COPE later in the presentation, so I won't spoil anything. AJ. Thanks, Robin. Hey, I'm AJ Boston. Um, I do scholarly communication here at Murray State in Western Kentucky. Um, I am brand new to the COPE committee. Uh, I joined up this year and I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do to help. Um, and of course, I'm very glad to, to know that there's all these great resources out there uh, that can help schools like us. Um, at Murray State University, we have a university libraries level open access policy, and we've had something that's been on the table at the university level, and we're in the process of bringing that back to the table uh, this year. So very glad to be with you all today. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, so next, we wanted to do a bit of an interactive thing to find out a bit more about everybody who is joining here today. So. I wonder if um, you can go to um, menti.com and enter the code 33600083 to participate in a little poll that we have. Um, we want to know, are you or is your institution a COPE member? And if so, have you been one for a while or just a short time? And I'll switch over to there. Wow, we're about half and half. Okay, so thanks everyone uh, for participating uh, in that it looks like we have a pretty good spread of those who have been with Kopi for quite some time, as well as a uh, number who are new to Kopi. Um, but there's also a good number of folk uh, here today who are not representative or not a Kopi member of either sort. And so I'll go to the next question, which should be able to be accessed from the same, which is, does your institution have an open access policy? So it looks like for most, yes, your institution does have an open access policy, um, but we still have a handful joining um, who are working on one and one who is not working on one, which is sad to hear, but hopefully we can help you uh, get there. So thanks everyone uh, for sharing that. And I'm going to turn over to AJ. All right, thank you so much, Elena. Uh, like Elena said, I'm AJ and I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, what COPE is. And just before I get into the parts that I'm supposed to say, I just wanna say to my fellow members that when I first joined up, I was a little disappointed to learn that we pronounced it COPE and not COAPI. 
And I just want to put it on the table that maybe we can um, maybe say that both pronunciations are okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Kawapi today. All right. So, okay. Back to our scheduled program. So about Kawapi, uh, we were formed in 2011 by the University of Kansas Libraries in consultation with over 20 other higher ed institutions. We exist to exchange information and best practices around the development, implementation, and assessment of open access policies, and to advocate for practices that assist in the ongoing transformation of the scholarly communication system. Uh, right now, we sit at more that, than 110 members from across North America, um, and we defined a full member as one that has adopted an OA policy and an affiliate member as one that is in the progress of developing an OA policy. The principles of COAPI are uh, the immediate and barrier-free online dissemination of scholarly research resulting in faster growth of new knowledge, increased impact of research, and improved return on public research investments. Developing and implementing institutional open access policies. Sharing experiences and best practices in the development and implementation of open access policies with individuals at institutions interested in cultivating cultures of open access and fostering a more open scholarly communication system through cultural and legislative change at the local, national, and international levels. Right now, COPE sits at 122 members across North America. And shout out to Elena for, for putting together this map for us. And you can find the full list of this at uh, sparkopen.org, COPE slash members. The governance of COPE uh, beginning in 2012, uh, a formal steering committee was created. And the steering committee makeup uh, is composed of a chair, a vice chair, past chair, ex officio, four members, and an OA working group liaison, and that is currently me. Uh, the current steering committee includes myself, Kevin Hawkins of the University of North Texas, Annalie Perry of Arizona State University, Jerry O'Dell of IUPUI, Mona Ramanetti of State University of New York at Stony Brook, Robin Sin of Johns Hopkins University, Elena Wrigley, California Digital Library, and Philip Young, Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. And currently we are recruiting for two new members for 21-23. And there you will find a link if you are interested. It is bit.ly slash C-O-A-P-I-S-C-21. All right, and with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Elena. Thanks so much. I think, Robin, are you? I think it's actually me. Yeah, thanks so much, Robin. <laughs> no worries, you can advance the slide. So as um, AJ talked, um, told you we were, you know, we're eight or nine years old. Um, and we do um, a broad range of activities. Um, and first up is the events. Um, we have community calls like this one. I think this is our first open house promoting ourselves. So thanks, Elena, for that idea. Um, one of the things that's, um, well, it's always been true even before the pandemic. Most of our meetings were virtual because we are scattered across um, the country, uh, North America actually. And so um, the community calls were started about two, maybe three years ago to try to help get us together a little more frequently than just at a, you know, every other year meeting. Um, we have an annual virtual meeting, which is basically a report out what we've done who we need to help us with things like, you know, recruiting more steering committee members, recruiting more working group members, telling you about our advocacy 
and other projects and giving all our members a chance to let us know what they would like from us and from the rest of the group as well. Um, Pre-pandemic, we tried to have informal in-person meetings alongside conferences. At first, these were um, held when Spark used to have a biennial meeting, and we are a, a kind of a Spark baby or um, adoptee because we use their platform and they, they help us um, with a lot of work. Um, so when Spark ended those biannual meetings, we kind of cast about and we're going to start trying to get um, gatherings whenever ACRL goes back to in-person. Because again, it's every other year, uh, we think a large number of our members would be attending and it would be easy enough to, to get together for a, a short topic discussion, meeting, uh, drinks, something like that, a spark baby. <laughs> so next next slide, please. Um, we do a lot of, well, okay, we do advocacy. Um, you know, we advocate for policies um, regionally, nationally, and even internationally nowadays. If you go to the activities page on the Spark website and scroll down a bit, you'll get to see a list of some of the petitions we've signed or endorsed, um, you know, calls for proposals, calls for, um, you know, comment, things like that. And if you're on our email list, you're going to see that um, we were recently asked about um, supporting the coalition S um, comment for or statement for publishers about paying it more attention to their R RSS um, statements. And doo -doo -doo, I think that's next. So our working groups are fairly new. They've only been in existence maybe three, three and a half years um, when things got rolling and lots of work was starting to get done. The steering committee couldn't actually do it all. So we started the community or I mean the working groups. Um, the community call working group um, was actually taking off with the community calls and the steering committee said, okay, we can't do this. So we need a, a group. So Devin is our first chair for that group. Um, and it's seemed to be doing very well. Um, even with every group going to community calls during the pandemic, we're still getting a lot of um, interest in our community calls. We have a copyright working group. Um, we also have a very interesting small and teaching first universities working group. Um, we still haven't, you should have heard the amount of effort we put into trying to make an acronym for this group, but COPE is kind of preponderantly large institutions since, you know, those are the ones who tended to do the open access policy first. Um, and we wanted to try to put together a group that could pay more attention to smaller universe, smaller colleges and teaching first universities um, to help them get open access policies established and, and um, help them with their work. Um, we've had a number of previous working groups that finished their charges, um, the toolkit and the website working group. Um, working groups, members can serve two years. It's all very informal. If you haven't figured it out yet, Kopi's a pretty informal group. So um, if you get interested in a working group, but there's not a call for members, I would suggest getting in touch with the working group and seeing if they would like to join. Um, usually people are very welcoming. Um, we do, um, because if this is, I think our, we're going into our third full year of the working group. So some people are cycling off almost all of these. So we are looking for new working group members across all of these. And we'd also like to hear if you have ideas for other kinds of working group. Are there other segments of the SCALCOM system and the open access policy system that needs some attention and, and some sharing of resources or um, work could be done. So please let us know about that. Next slide, please. So resources. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure I'm going to sound like a, a salesperson at this point, but you, you are the resource. Um, Kopi was started back in 2011, as AJ said, when 
universities really started being interested in open access policies. And often at that point in time, there were no offices of scholarly communication or things like that. So it was one librarian, maybe two at an institution working on this or trying to promote this and they needed a way to be in touch with like-minded librarians and share ideas and information and things they'd written so you didn't have to rewrite every everything you wanted to to share out to your faculty and your administration so that's why copy was really really created and we are a community of practice so the more you're involved the more we all learn from each other. Um, we do have the members only mailing list, which has fairly low volume, which I think we're all very thankful for, but please do use it. If you have a question about something, you read something really interesting and you're just like, so how should I feel about this? Or I feel this way and how do you feel? And does this work for everybody or only the big institutions or only the little institutions? Um, so we'd love to see a little bit more traffic on there. And we'd also love to hear celebrations. We love it when people pass a policy or get mentioned in their newsletter or things like that. So we would love to hear more about that as well. The Copy Toolkit is an OSF um, toolkit that we created to help share some of these resources instead of just attaching documents to an email list that then get lost. Um, they built this really nice um, toolkit that has both a public side and a private side. So if you create a presentation for your faculty or your administration or you know an infographic or a document and you're, you're comfortable sharing it publicly, please put it in the public side of our toolkit. If you have something that might be a little more sensitive, and I'm not talking secrets, and I'm not talking, num you know, money numbers or anything like that, but you know, you, maybe, maybe you just don't think everybody on the web should see this one slide in your presentation that might not reflect well on your university or, or something like that. Um, it's, it's totally up to you. There's no real good definition of public versus private, except that COPE members have to log in to see the private side of things. Um, when I first joined, when we were kind of moving from advocacy into implementation at Johns Hopkins, and I was looking through the toolkit, I found a couple different um, ideas. I mean, I didn't take a presentation whole hog, but I certainly got ideas on how to phrase things from the, the presentations that are in there. But the one thing that I did lift with permission from Devin at FSU was um, they had drafted letters to send to the publishers once their open access policy was available to basically say, Dear Publisher X, our faculty now have an open access policy we expect you to um, abide by that and let them, you know, deposit their author accepted manuscripts or let them make it open. And, and so um, with his permission, I picked it right up and replaced FSU with JHU. And we sent out probably 50 or 60 copies of that to, um, oh yes, and Devin, yes, thank you. I, I, I was pretty sure you had also um, found it somewhere else. So thank you for, Boston University. Yes, share alike. Um, so we have all these different sections. And again, it's the community of practice idea. If you can sp spend a few minutes to put some of your documents or PowerPoints or infographics or letters in here, that means other people will have a chance to build on it. Um, reuse it and, and it just makes um, life a little easier to have something like this to go to. So um, I hope you can all take a look at it and then maybe add to it. That would be lovely. So I think that's it and we're at about 25 after. So now it's time for the open house part which is ask us questions. We have other steering committee members here besides Elena and I and AJ, so we'd be happy to answer questions. Thanks.